times men deny they are the father on paternity court. You yelled at me one time, we were sitting there arguing, and you're like, you know what, don't worry about the kids, you're not the father. She said she said that to <laughs> And half of me believes her, half of, her, half of me doesn't, you know? You playing games and I need to talk to you. Then you write, I'm pregnant. Can you answer the phone, please? Oh. Now, when you have doubts, you on? Monique just wants one thing, and it's to save her marriage. Mr. Sidwell, on the other hand, is 100% sure that he can't possibly be two-year-old Timothy's father. Why? Well, it's all got to do with a very specific medical condition he suffers from. I don't think I can have kids anymore due to my medical condition. If he's not my kid, then there's no marriage. So I want to get the results to find out, is Timothy really my kid? And that's why I'm here. How did you meet? We met in a grocery store. Uh, I was shopping, getting ready for a party. Um, I had a basket full of ribs and chicken and all kinds of good meats. The story of these two meeting is pretty cute. They came across each other in a grocery store and really hit it off when Monique invited Mr. Sidwell for a barbecue. And then eventually, things started getting heated and the two became intimate with each other. What was the nature of your relationship right before Timothy was conceived? We were in a full-blown relationship. And so you were together? Yes. You say you weren't seeing anybody else? No. Mr. Sidwell wasn't seeing anybody I else? I that. Okay. So, Mr. Sidwell, you had bought some more phones. <laughs> <laughs> now, the two had plans to marry. Before long, Monique got pregnant and flash forward nine months, she's in the hospital giving birth to Timothy. Mr. Sidwell came to visit, held the baby for a bit, but when Monique woke up, he was gone. Did you sign the birth certificate? Even though I had doubt, yes I did. All right. Yes I did, yes I did. Okay. Well, I still had doubt, Your Honor, because the, he didn't look like me. You'll see he have a jug head and I have a round shape. Actually, they look both got head. thumb heads. I have, no, look at my head. What is a jug head? Jug head, look, look at his forehead. It's like a jug, Your Honor. Now legally, Mr. Sidwell is the father, even though he denies such responsibility. And if today he finds out through the paternity tests that he's not the father, he's going to petition the name on the birth certificate. And what's more, he'll call off the wedding. I was diagnosed type 2 diabetes, okay? And it affected my sexual uh, drive. It actually affected my uh, erection. So it turns out Mr. Sidwell's diabetes greatly affects his sex drive. So there's no way he can be Timothy's father. Then, a doctor is brought into court to have a more scientific perspective on the whole situation. And boy, does that doctor have some facts to spill. Diabetes damages the fine nerves and blood vessels, which can lead to erectile dysfunction. Could he have fathered a child? Well, that's a trickier question. I'm, if he I like <laughs> these tricky questions. I'm, yeah, good, I'm yeah. good for at least a couple of those a day. It is possible as long as you were able to get some amount of erection enough to have relations. Well, there's no simple simple answer to this. It's true that his condition prevents him from having a kid, but at the same time, it's not impossible. Now, all that Monique wants is to revive her relationship with the man she loves and prove to him that he, indeed, is the father. Mr. Sidwell, you are the father. Yes. <laughs> May I make a statement from me? Yes. Being that Timothy is my son at this time, I would like to ask her to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Williams and Mr. Lee have finally decided to bring their paternity problems to the court. Miss Williams feels very angry that Mr. Lee denies being Wyatt's father. He's convinced that the baby doesn't belong to him, and he needs confirmation to end the marriage. Technically, I'm here to prove to my husband, whom I've been married to almost three years, that our son is his, which is something I shouldn't have to do, but it's to please him and his family. And I'm so sick of them, that's the reason why we're here, because he's following behind his family and not his wife. The saddest part is the toll that's taken on Wyatt. Because Lee doesn't accept him as his own son, Wyatt doesn't even call Lee dad. He calls him Lee. It's heartbreaking to see that the poor kid has to bear the brunt of his parents' unresolved issues. Me and Mr. Jackson been in a relationship for almost eight years. Look at that. What you want to say? And no, that's our other child, but you want to say they're not yours. Like, come on. This hurts. I'm sorry. And it hurts you because? Because before that was Wyatt, we had two other children that we lost, two other daughters that we lost before Wyatt came along. Before Wyatt, the couple had already been in a marriage for almost eight years. That's pretty long. But they had their fair share of tragedies, with the major one being the passing away of their two daughters. 
So, after all that trouble, Mr. Lee shoving doubts in Miss Williams' face is just wrong. First message says, what's up with you, stranger? Your wife responds, laying low and making sure blank right. Read it carefully. The friend says, when can I see you again, though? I had fun kicking with you. And then you respond, I'm about to call you. Make sure you answer. And I know you had fun with me. Turns out Miss Williams has a notorious track record of cheating. And that's why Mr. Lee has trouble believing Wyatt is his son. He's plenty of proof to prove that his wife wasn't with him when Wyatt was conceived. So the only logical conclusion in his head is that he's not Wyatt's dad. You playing games and I need to talk to you. Then you write, I'm pregnant. Can you answer the phone, please? Now, when you have doubts, Your Honor? Technically, if you have no one to communicate with and you're pregnant again due to the fact that you just lost two babies yeah. and you're scared and that person is not there for you mentally and emotionally, yeah, yeah. that's the whole reason why we went on break. So the two were broken up before Miss Williams got pregnant again. But here's the thing. Mr. Lee believes that Miss Williams was already pregnant before the two reconciled. She keeps insisting that she conceived Wyatt during that window. But... So you're saying that there was another man you slept with when you all were off but trying to come back together? Mm-hmm. Unprotected sex. No, it was not. How do you know, Mr. Sex. Jackson? Man, she, were you there? Your Honor, no. That's the thing no. she told me, Your Honor. Me, your this Honor. man, he's full of it. Mr. Lee then brings in his cousin as witness. His cousin states to the court that she spotted Miss Williams talking to other men, and not just that. She saw her get into the car with them for 30 to 40 minutes. God knows doing what. You have seen Miss Williams with your own eyes? Yes, like what did you outside 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night in somebody's car for? If Lee ain't worried, it's not his car. So I have family members that's coming from out of state. Why I'm not from bring New them in Orleans? Y'all are from Georgia. So therefore, if my family want to roll up on me, why not bring them in house? Day, they can. Judge Lawrence scolds both of them for acting like such children and how it's taking a toll on two-year-old Wyatt. That's the age when kids start to develop emotional bonds with their children. And what's important is that Wyatt grows up with a father. Guess only the results can settle things for now. Mr. Jackson, you are the father. <laughs> Thank you. So that same energy y'all got, y'all can pack him up at my house. Thank you. Thank you. Pack it up, little girl. I apologize. Y'all can pack that's, it up. That's, that's your little boy. I know. Pack it up. That's my baby. Jordan and Mezgin have found themselves in a bit of a situation. Jordan denies that he's the biological father of baby Roger, and he'll go to any lengths to prove it. Right now, he's not only brought his own mother into court, but Meskin's mother as well. We were in a different state, in all honesty. She was in Texas while the date's conceived that the doctor told me. And everybody says that he doesn't look like me. My friends, my family, and her family have told me to get a paternity test. I don't oh. believe I'm the father because of that. So you believe during the window of time Roger was conceived, you all were in two different states. Completely different states. So Meskin is pretty insistent on the fact that Jordan's the only man she slept with when she conceived Roger. But Jordan's got another story to tell. Whatever his story is, Mezgin's done with it because she breaks down in court when she shares how tired she is of everyone denying baby Roger. How does the denial make you feel? I mean, that is his son. There could be no possible way because I didn't sleep with my ex. I see how emotional you are. That's his baby. <laughs> and it hurts you because... Everybody denies him. Looks like Jordan really came prepared with all the evidence. But it feels confusing about what he really wants. Even though he claims the baby's not his, he not only signed the birth certificate, he also named Roger after his grandpa. I don't believe either of them have ever questioned. I and Lisa have been a little bit more persistent in the questioning of the paternity of the baby. And when you say Lisa, that is? Meja's mother. So, Ms. Zagami, you also are doubtful that Roger is Mr. McElroy's child. No, it looks, he looks nothing like Jordan. It seems no one's on Mexican's side here. Both Jordan's mother and Meskin's mother believe that the baby looks like Meskin's ex. Both the mothers reveal that these two never had a stable relationship. They kept fighting, so it's not possible they could have a baby together. Her mother told me that they were running around for a little bit. So, Ms. Shigami, you spilled the beans that your daughter was out running around with her ex for a while. She told me that she was with her ex. Do you think your daughter would actually cheat on Mr. McElroy? No, Your Honor, I trust Meji 100%. Judge Lauren straight up confronts Mezgin if she did anything behind Jordan's back with her ex. As much as she looks guilty right now, the woman admits that she did hang out with her ex, but his mother was there as well. 
And you can't do anything strange when that's happening. But then the ex's mother submits a statement. I believe my son is Roger's dad. The week Mezgan was here, she came and picked him up. Mezgan said her and my son didn't sleep together, but I don't believe her. The biggest mistake they made was trying to reconcile their relationship. It only caused more problems and now a baby. So, three mothers now believe that Mezgan's lying and that Roger is actually the ex's baby. Even Judge Lauren sounds appalled and asks her again if everyone else has got the facts wrong and she's telling the court the truth. So right before she left, she told me I wasn't the father of the baby. She told you that? Yeah, yeah. What happened? You yelled at me one time. We were sitting there arguing and you're like, you know what, don't worry about the kids. You're not the father. She said she said that to and half of me believes her, half of, her do half of me doesn't, you know? Did you say that, Miss Zigami? Yes, Your Honor. Well, it looks like things really aren't in Mezgin's favor. And Jordan's pretty firm that the conception dates don't line up, so there's no chance Roger's his baby. But so far, it's only been speculation. The truth will come out with the DNA tests. Is Jordan really the father? Mr. McElroy, you are the father. How does it feel to know Mr. McElroy? It was relieved off my shoulders and I, I just, I love my family so much. Miss Eubanks and Mr. Wilkes have been fighting over the paternity of a beautiful son named Mozzie. All Miss Eubanks wants to do is prove that the son belongs to Mr. Wilkes, because that's the only way she can convince Mr. Wilkes to marry her. I'm 1,002% sure that he's my child's father. I just want these results for him so we can move forward and get married like we planned. You shouldn't have no doubts or no feelings that anything else is going on. And it's not just that he's doubting you, he's doubting your baby. Yes. Turns out that these two have been in a relationship for a pretty long time. Then why doesn't Mr. Wilkes believe Mozzie is his son? He does everything for him that a father should do. But at the end of the day, he thinks the baby doesn't look like him. What's giving him so many doubts about this kid? I have my reasoning. It's just the connection. It wasn't there when he first came. You know, like, my kids all give me certain signs. I just didn't feel any type of connection. You know, I even held him up. I did him like the little Simba. And I can see that you don't take this lightly. You are troubled about this. Exactly. The story of these two is just as strange. They met at a strip club of all places, and both claimed that it was love at first sight. But things weren't all rainbows and sunshine. After the birth of their first kid, the two decided to have some time apart from each other. She was definitely talking to other people at the time. When you we say talking, what does that mean? Does that mean? That mean that could be sex also. No. But we're just not together. Well, that's not talking then. No. <laughs> I never had no relations with nobody else but David. I talked to other people when we had that little split, but I never had relations with nobody else. Well, so the whole scene with encountering Miss Eubanks' ex has Mr. Wilkes doubting everything about her. One could say that's the reason why he has trust issues and doesn't think Mozzie is his son. In the end, Mr. Wilkes tells that Miss Eubanks might look innocent, but that's far from the truth. So I went through the phone one night and seen a video. Uh-oh. Did you bring that video to court? I have the video. Let's take a look at the video. We see that's her, that's her, uh, when she says she had eyes for me, that's her dancing. That's her, she's bent over, she just slapped the camera. That's a guy behind her, you can't really see it. The, you kind of see, you see that grinding? Damn, that video evidence is pretty strong against Miss Eubanks. But as much as Mr. Wilkes is trying to show himself as a fallen hero, turns out he's not all that innocent either. Miss Eubanks doesn't hold back and reveals how he sent her pictures with another girl. But before that even took place, he sent me a picture of him and another girl talking look, about this is this white. This isn't couples court. We're here for a paternity test. It's you love me also. Yeah, but, but you're you not. Love me also. We're here you for can't results. say you love me also. We're then there's a moment of pure chaos in the court. Mr. Wilkes brings in a witness who saw Miss Eubanks twerking against guys at a club. The guy starts acting the way Miss Eubanks did, and the entire court erupts into laughter. Even Judge Lauren can't hold herself back. I'm in the club, I'm standing back, I'm looking. All you see is him all on her. They grind. Hey, okay. He Do lying. it one more time. One more time. No, he's lying. This Dude's all on it like this. Lying. <laughs> like, he is no, you're on Jerome, No. Go and hit it one time, Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
pretty clear that these two parties are just messing around with each other. But now that they've got a kid, it's time to make this business serious. Mr. Wilkes is just waiting for the results so he can rest easy, knowing if he's the father of Mozzie or not. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Wilkes, you are the father. <laughs> That's your beautiful baby boy. Can I give her a hug? Absolutely, if she's okay. 